Now, if you're a Photoshop user and you like to do compositing, you've no doubt heard of Harmonize that's been introduced into Photoshop Beta, which is fantastic for compositing objects into a scene, but not so good for people. However, I've come up with a bit of a workaround where it can help us when compositing people into a scene, and it can help us with the hardest part only, the shadows. Now, before I show you this workaround, I just wanted to give you the heads up about my photography masterclass on school that you can jump in and experience for free using the seven day free trial. Now in the masterclass, we have weekly live calls, workshops, courses, special guest seminars, an active forum with members from all over the world and a whole lot more. You just need to click on the link for the seven day no commitment fee trial that I've put in the description. So the first thing I want to show you is using Harmonize. Now, more recently, I've done a video showing how we can use Harmonize to add an object into a scene and how Harmonize alters the coloring and adds in shadows that make it look absolutely 100% genuine. It does lower the resolution of what this actually produced, but the results are really, really incredible. However, Harmonize is not set up yet for working with humans. Let me show what I mean. So this here is going to be a composite that I'm working on where we've got this Viking figure who was originally photographed in the studio. I've done quite a crude cutout. I'm going to show you how I fix that in a short while. Uh, and I've also got this background image as well. Now, I want to make it look initially that he really is stood on this ground. And like I say, that is the hardest thing to do when it comes to compositing, making these contact shadows and cast shadows look real. So let's just give a quick look at Harmonize to see what it can do. So we have our uh, masking layer just here. In fact, what I will do is I'm going to keep this one nice and safe. So I'm going to press down Command or Control and J to duplicate that. And I'll just turn off the main working one there. So that's, that's safe in case anything goes wrong. But what I'll do now is now that I've got this Viking layer and a background layer in the contextual taskbar, we now have the Harmonize option. So I'll click on that. That'll then get to work to see what it can do. Now, I'll speed this up. It takes roughly 10 to 12 seconds, and then we'll look at the result. All right, so this is what we've got then. We've got our three variations of what it's done, but you'll see what I mean now. Look, when I zoom in, look what it's done to our Viking character. If I turn off this harmonized layer, so we see the original shot with a Sony, 61 megapixels. You can see lots and lots of detail, texture. The color looks great but then the harmonized layer has kind of messed it out, messed it up quite a lot. But I'm not worried about this because I know it doesn't work well on humans. But the thing I do want to have a look at is the contact and cast shadow. And you can see there it's not, it's done a little bit. We can see it in this area here, but I want it to be a little bit more impressive. Now, I don't know if this is a bit of a fluke or what, but what I'm finding is if I'm not getting the correct kind of shadows, if I add a fake light source into the image, it does seem to have an impact. So this is this is what I mean. Look, I'll get rid of this harmonized layer just here. Let's just close that down. And the bottom of the layers panel, I've got my original background layer. I'm going to duplicate that. And then I'm going to get a brush with a white foreground color. And I'm going to make sure that the brush itself is on 0% hardness. And all I'll do in the sky area here, I'm just going to press down to create a really bright light source. I have tried this, just adding this uh, light source onto a blank layer, but it doesn't seem to work as well, which is why I've duplicated the original background. Now what I'll do is I will go to the upper layer where we've got our Viking, and then I'll click on Harmonize. And again, it takes roughly 10 to 12 seconds or so, so I'll speed this up. All right, so now look, let me just zoom in. Again, forget about the quality of what it's done to the subject. Let's look at the cast shadows, the contact and cast shadows. Look at the difference here now, look. There's before and after. We've got way more, and it looks much more realistic that he's actually stood on that floor. So for me, the next thing I would do is this. I'll go to the layer stack here, and I'll first of all get rid of the layer where I added that fake light source in. So I'll click on it, and I'll press delete. I also don't need this... Uh, original, uh, sorry, this copy here that I did of the original mask. So I'll click on that layer and I'll delete it. I do want this harmonized layer, but I don't want to have all of this kind of weird coloring on the subject. I only want to have the contact and cast shadows. So I've got a layer mask attached to this harmonized layer, but if I look at it, there's quite a lot of stuff in this. 
uh, that I would need to kind of paint out with a black mask uh, to, to bring back just the contact and cast shadow. I could maybe fill the whole layer here, the whole layer mask here with black. But what that's going to do is it's going to give me the colouring over everything. So then I would need to manually paint in the shape of the mask. For me, what I tend to do with this is I'm going to come to the layer mask itself and I'm going to right click and choose a command called apply layer mask. But you'll see here, look, it's greyed out. And that's because we've got this icon in the main thumbnail telling us that this is a harmonized layer. So I need to make this a normal, regular layer. And the way I do that is come over to the right hand side where we've got the layer name and I'll right click and I'll come down in the option here to rasterize layer or make this layer normal. I'll click on that. We still keep the layer mask, but you'll see now, look, that icon has gone. Now, when I click on the layer mask and right click on it and choose apply layer mask. So now look, this is what we've got. If I turn everything else off, we are left, left with the Viking, this transparent area, but the contact and cast shadows just there. So what I will do is this. I can now add a layer mask to this harmonized layer, but I'm going to add a black layer mask because I only want to include a little bit of it, this layer down this bottom bit here. I don't want all the main part. So to do that, whilst I'm active on that harmonized layer, I'll hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and click to add a new layer mask. That adds a black layer mask so that everything is then hidden. I can then turn on the layer below containing my original mask cutout. Then I'll get a brush with a white foreground color. I'll bring the size of that brush down and I'll zoom in. And all I'll do now is just brush around to bring back the contact and cast shadow that was given to us by that harmonized layer. Like so. So it looks so much more realistic now that his feet really are touching that ground and the shadows being made from that light source hitting his body like so. So that's just something that I found out with harmonize. It's definitely definitely something to keep looking at here because I think there's a lot of potential with it. Oh, and regarding the hair, what I tend to do with that is, uh, whereas before I used to spend a long time working on hair to make it look really, really good, but if I show you the original shot, look, if we turn off that layer mask, you can see here when he was photographed in the studio, we had a little bit of a fan going and we've got all this flyaway hair, really, really hard to pick up. So to save me the heartache of doing that, all I would do is click on that upper layer. I'll use something like the selection brush tool and I'll make sure here I've found out that I get better results with this, with the hair, if the hardness is at 100%, not down here, but all the way at 100%. And I'll just roughly brush in where I want the hair to be. Something like this. So we'll brush out a little bit because his hair's gonna be blowing like so. And then in the generative fill, I'm just going to use Firefly. I'm not using the Nano Banana just yet. Sticking with Firefly Image 3, I'll just type in long brown wavy hair blowing in the wind. Let's put a space in between there. There we go. And click on Generate. Again, generation's taking roughly 10 to 12 seconds. So I'll speed this part of the video up so we can see what we get. All right, not too bad. Oh, there you go. So we could go with some of these here, but you know, if you're not happy with them, you could quite easily then just click on generate again to get another few variations. But I'm finding that this works really well and saving me a ton of time that I can spend more time on being creative as opposed to trying to pick up all these loose, loose hairs. So there you go. That's just something I've been playing around with lately. So I thought I'd share it with you, but I really think it's got a lot of potential there. Certainly for now, until Harmonize does improve with regards to compositing people and also that resolution changes. When it comes to the shadows, I think we can kind of get away with it because that's all it is, just a shadow. So have a go and I will see you in the next video.